All right, what's up, everyone? Um, so today I want to give my review so far on New World and talk about the game and a lot of aspects that I love and some of the things I dislike. Um, but yeah, um, to give you an, a reference, uh, I have I've played about 122 hours in the last two weeks, and I've been enjoying the game and I continue to keep playing the game. I just want to talk about it. So, <clears throat> let's get right into it. First things first. Um, ignore my mess of an inventory. I'm, uh, let's get done with the world tour. One of the things that really got me into New World, um, flat out, was this world. Um, so, you know, as we run around, you'll notice that the players are cutting down trees. Sometimes later on, if, if we see them, they'll be mining uh, different ores. And boulders and the world feels alive the uh there's animals running around there's elk and shit that'll run away from you and then there's plenty of mobs that'll attack you like wolves and uh rams and such uh, actually will attack you some boars will attack you and um yeah i really love the world of new world just running around and you know hunting and skinning and collecting stuff to use uh, at your base, sorry, at base, I'm sorry, at, sh at the, the cities, and develop other skills, um, that the player can use. I, I, it's, I just genuinely enjoy it. Um, it's the first game where I feel like I actively, uh, enjoy going out and doing the life skills. In most MMOs, I tend to avoid the life skills, uh, such as, you know, gathering and such. Unless I just am bored and I want something to do. But in this game, I actually enjoy doing them, going out and collecting those materials, and then using them to upgrade my own life skills. Um, and I also feel rewarded. Uh, if you want to spend your time gathering rare resources, or say you have like a good area where you know you can gather a lot of uh, spe uh, specialty resources, um... You can do that. You can go into those areas and collect those resources and then take that and then turn that into gold by selling it on the market. Um, and you can actually sell your services, which is really nice uh, for like crafting gear for other players and such. Um, it's really alive and it feels like the community uh, is really into the world as well. You know, everybody's going out doing their own thing and then that feels like the players that are in the world are assisting in the world so like you know just because you don't have uh say you don't have maxed out uh engineering armoring you can you can go to somebody who has these stats or has these perks these crafting things leveled up and then they will do the work for you which is really nice um and there's some ways that you can get around this say that you don't particularly like logging but you want to level up the woodworking tree you can just buy logs and then convert it into woodworking. I know it's pretty simple, but it just it feels nice to see the community working, and not just specific, not just directly always selling um, equipment that they find on the auction house. Even though they, people still do that with a lot of equipment, but you can go to people and you know get kind of get more of a uh, a better take on the equipment. It seems like because uh, you can you can have more control over what you'll be getting out of the equipment that you want to make. Um, and it's very vast. Uh, a lot of the areas, um, that you'll go through on the map, as you see, I still have a lot to do. A lot of these lower areas kind of look the same, but when you start coming up here, these areas, they all look very different. Uh, uh, the parts that I, the areas I don't really like are like, are like Weaver's Fen and Reek Water. They're really swampy. Not really a whole lot of fun to go around. Cutlass Keys is okay. Um, Ebon Scale is beautiful. So is Eden Grove and Morningdale. These are probably two of my favorite uh, places to be in the entire game. They're absolutely stunning. Um, they're absolutely stunning environments to walk around. Um, but, yeah. The world is very enticing and it's just genuinely fun to go around and take part in the world and, you know, do what you want to do. Um, and another nice thing that I find that I don't think a lot of other games do, but I could be completely wrong, um, 
with with the life skills such as like skinning and such so like killing this elk and skinning it normally in a lot of games once you once you hit a certain point this would be kind of pointless because it's too low of a level or you don't get xp anymore you just would care about the, the resources out of it well if you notice i'm still getting xp for tracking and skinning that's because i can use that and i can get materials through these chests once i once i hit one of those capstones so um there's three bars in the in the uh bar of the tracking and skinning if we go and look at it real quick so you'll notice that there's these three like kind of like rivets and what each one they hit so what these are is that once you hit this one you get a reward once you get this one you get a reward and once you hit this you'll level up and get another reward and it's generally better um and uh they give you like cool so they give you like raw high and stuff they'll give you emerald gypsum if you're maxed out and it's your first time hitting you're at, you're at 60 and you, it'll start giving you gypsum i don't know if it does it before you hit 60 not quite sure that i don't remember entirely but it's pretty self-explanatory um uh next up i want to talk about um i want to talk about the inventory system in this game as you can see mine is very cluttered this is actually kind of a good thing because it helps me iterate this point that i really like so a lot of games uh for example like if you were like well like world of warcraft there's like bag space right so you have a number you have a bag you have like several bags that are gigantic they can hold a certain amount well this game you do have bags but they work a bit differently so you can see up here, I have a carrying weight, and it's at 1376. I can obviously uh, bring this carrying weight down if I took off a bag, or if you're at lower ranks, you can bring this carrying weight up by getting better bags to provide stats and stuff and such uh, for the player. I like this a lot because I don't feel like I have to entirely dump all my inventory or keep my inventory entirely cleaned out just in case. Uh, I like that I can have the ability to um, the ability to put stuff in my inventory or keep stuff in my inventory as much as I like and just manage the weight system, which is what I genuinely enjoy. <clears throat> and the next thing I really enjoy about this game is the attribute system and the weapon mastery system, which will both be a big part of you leveling up. So as you level up, you'll gain attributes. And the way this works is that you will take these attribute points and you'll, inspect, you'll invest them into one of five stats, or two of five stats, depending on, you know, where you are. Um, generally, you want to have 300 of one and then something of the other one, generally it's trying to get this to 150, but besides the point, each weapon scales off a different thing. You know, you'll generally invest these stats based on the weapon that you're trying to main. So, for example, if you wanted to use the Great Axe, you'd invest in Strength. Some weapons have secondary scalings, like Blunderbuss, where it scales off strength and dex. This is for the player to decide. They have different scalings and different ways they want to do they do things with these. I find this to be very fun, very interesting, and you can create unique things. You'll see that there's a blue here. What all this means is that your equipment later on in the game, or even early in the game, will provide you with a stat. Um, for example, mine provides me with dex and constitution. What that does is it gives me both dex and constitution, and it adds onto this bar which is really nice. That, so that's why I'm at 300 and 148 constitution. The weapon mastery system. Now this is basically where your skills as a player come into play. So a lot of most, you have skills that are based on your class, but this game, you don't so much have a class. You can only have one character per server. Let me preface that, which is kind of, I, it's kind of a con for me. I don't really like that because I really want to, I wanted to play with my friend who is low level and help him up to 60. But it's, it's beyond the point. I, it's kind of a con. So that can be like one of my cons, but this is one of the things that I do like. So I don't, ha I don't feel locked into a class in this game. And so I feel willing to go through and try out these different weapons and experiment with them. Um, the one I have found a whole lot of love to with is the bow. I find, I love the bow. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a great time. I think the great sword is a lot of fun. It's the newest weapon. It's what everybody's enjoying right now. It's, it's crazy. It's really good. And there's all sorts of different stuff here. Uh, mage, mage just doesn't doesn't seem as easy indirectly because there's two weapons. You usually run two weapons, so I run bow spear. Uh, but mages right now are either running like uh, fire staff, ice gauntlet, or ice gauntlet, void gauntlet. You really just have to kind of play and see where you sit. 
there is a lot of metas. There's there's very specific meta builds that people are doing. However, if you're still just a little unsure, don't be afraid to go outside of the realm and try something new. Because new metas always be made, and it's always important that a player, you know, develops what they, you know, feel like they're comfortable with. Each weapon has, like, their own kind of unique thing that they do. So, I highly recommend it. I really enjoy this because it really lets you think with the weapons. Now, going on to the next thing. I want to talk about something that is kind of like a double-edged sword for me. Um, something I like and dislike at the same time. That's gypsum. Now, I have a very specific reason. I'm not a big fan of the gypsum, but I also like it at the same time. So, I think gypsum is great because it guarantees that the player will at least progress the items they are looking to progress. So, for example, you'll see that these red ones are already blocked out, which means I've already upgraded these items today from the gypsum. That's fine. And that doesn't bother me. The issue is that I'd have with the the gypsum is that this doesn't the expertise. It's basically like not less the gypsum and more just the expertise system. So let me explain. I know maybe it's just because I'm a new player, but I feel like the the gypsum and expertise system wasn't explained very well. So you notice that I got six expertise for my spear, which is great. That's now at five fifty nine. You notice my armor is at 600. So, the expertise, expertise system is a bit, I feel like, not explained very well. So, players won't know that maybe they should be taking part in world tours or doing certain things when they hit endgame. If, they, if they're new, it doesn't feel like it's very well explained. I actually had to go into a YouTube video and watch a YouTube video to understand how the um, expertise in gypsum system worked. It's just a personal thing of mine. I don't think it was very well designed there. But let's be, let's be on the point. Let's move on. The way expertise works, and I do kind of like uh, expertise in a lot of other games, but it works differently in those games. Example, The Division. I'm a big fan of The Division, and there's gear score in that game, and that's kind of what expertise is. Um, and gear score. How expertise and gear score kind of go in a weird hand in hand in this game. Um, so expertise is basically what level your equipment can go up to. For example, like my gear can drop at 600 now, and I can wear 600 gear. Whereas, for example, if we look at my my amulet, uh, I'm only 560, 568 expertise on it, and it would be 550, 577, but it brings down it to 572. So, kind of get that idea, like the gear score on it could be 577, but it only carries me up to 572 because of my I'm limited by my expertise on these items. That's why I, I don't really like expertise, because I feel like I can't make jumps, but I understand it because players do sell the max level gear on the auction house, which could create problems. But I just, I'm not a big fan of it because it's not really well explained how you're supposed to level it. And the way you're supposed to level it is through opening chests, doing bosses, doing dungeons. Uh, and the gypsum kiln, which is really nice for that fact. That's kind of why I said it's a double-edged sword. Because the gypsum kiln lets you pick what items you're going to upgrade. And um, get that item for that. Which is why I kind of don't like the expertise system. Because it's com it's generally random. So... If I press, if I go over here and I come into the weapon mastery, you'll notice that I'm a, I use my bow a lot, but I have weapons up here that are 557, 554, 556, 552 even, and some weapon and like these two are you know behind on some of these, and I don't even have these weapons leveled. That's because the way um, expertise works is when you get these items, when you get these upgrades, it's bumps to other gear. That may not be for the gear you're using. It's kind of weird. Armor armor is different. Uh, it's just for all broad armor. That's why that my my entire armor set is 600, and I believe it's all for all. And it is for all earrings and rings and uh, amulet, amulets as well. It's for all of those as well. Um, those are all broad. But the weapons is, is in particular, which is why you can fall behind compared to your other rest of your gear. Now, some people I've seen and I've heard of getting lucky and just getting a lot of their weapon back to back to back and getting a really high gear score really fast, which is which is understandable and and uh, very um, plausible. Um, but that's one of my like kind of gripes is like the not explaining the the expertise. 
and uh, that's why, and it's kind of weird. Um, another weird thing that they do in this game also is that if later on your the gypsum kilns are like only in like the end games areas for some reason. So like they're only in these these outposts, and they're in ebb and scale, I believe. But they're like only in the outposts, I think, which is really weird. But that's besides the point. Another fun thing in this game is the PvP. I find it to be very fun, but it can also be very punishing. So if you're a new player coming to this game, you're going to have to deal with players who have been playing this game for a year or so. And so they're going to have an understanding of the game, iframes and everything. You just have to play and understand it. Uh, I don't really like the muskets. I feel like they're kind of annoying, but, you know, it's besides the point. Um, now, let's get into the cons, and we're just going to talk about it right now, right here. And we'll, and, and this will be the end after the cons, and I'll, t I'll explain it. But... Like my one of the biggest cons is that the leveling system, the leveling right now is very slow. It's half of what it used to be, and it's still very slow. You need to, you need to go in understanding that and expecting that. That's just how it is. Um, another con is like I said, the PvP can be very hard to get into if you're not if you're not like uh, okay with accepting the challenge that is getting into the PvP. The people in it are very good. And it is very hard to, you have to learn iframes and how to do potion management. And you just have to, it's very, it can be very difficult for new players to get into and understand. And like, they don't, some people don't understand this entire, like the perks and how you distribute perks and why you want perks and if they stack or not. Like it's not, it can be very difficult for new players. And I struggled a whole lot at the beginning of Outpost Rush because I didn't, like when I was, for example, I was playing Outpost Rush, I guess I should say. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, how I want to do it, or why I want to do it. And that can be a big problem um, for new players to deal with because they don't understand, you know, a lot of these systems or may not get it entirely. And these people are just, like, going to outclass them in every day, every way. Um, another thing that I kind of don't like with uh, going alongside with the leveling is the uh, main story quests. Now this is obviously getting reworked to the level 30 to 60 experience, I believe, or 25 to 60 experience is getting reworked currently. So this, will, this won't, probably won't be the effect, this probably won't be the case anymore afterwards, but um, the quests, these areas give you, the areas are all like level based, but the quests jump, so sometimes they'll go from like 45 to 50, and you'll be going to areas. I know like it's such a minor thing, but I, the, the, it's, the story quests give the most XP, and it can be kind of daunting and annoying to go through and do these side quests. And some people have even said that you can actually run out of quests before you get to the point where you can uh, you can run out of main story quests before you get to level 60, which is a big problem, in my opinion, for the game. Um, but yeah. Uh, there, and I guess some other things that I could bring up that people may think is annoying. There's a cash shop. Just for armor and skins and stuff. Uh, there's there's a housing system. I haven't got to go look at that, look into that much yet. Uh, another thing is there's a there's actually a pretty nice, in my opinion, variety of dungeons. There's not many dungeons, but they're pretty nice. Like they're different from each other, which is very nice, in my opinion. Um, because like for example, Genesis is based off of like these dryads and these like these like uh earth-like creatures and then you go to like lazarus and it's like dead undead skeletons um I, if i can even find lazarus yeah it's like undead skeletons and like different types of like brought back things it's very interesting it's very fun um and tempest has to do with the corrupted and etc etc it's very fun um and differences at least in the dungeons and people like to speed run them and go through them because they're not very complex but they can, you can get complex with mutations, which I haven't got into yet, so I can't. I don't feel like comfortable talking about that. Um, but yeah, uh, basically what I'm trying to say is I'm having a great time with New World, and I highly recommend you at least give New World a chance. New World had a very rough start at the beginning uh, when it first came out, and I and I and I do think it was kind of brought on themselves. I think the game still needed a little bit more time, but. The game now is is a lot more fun. It is a lot more, you know, understandable, and it has moments of like you know questionable moments, like the expertise and gypsum and other things. But it's very fun. I definitely think you should give it a try. It's a lot of grinding, but it's a lot of fun if you're willing to put in the grind, put in the effort. Um, and it can feel very rewarding at times. 
um it it's it's just a good time it's very relaxing like i said so you can put on like a youtube video a, a movie a tv show and then go run around collecting things doing life skill things and you will still be progressing and you know just having a great time hey yeah, guys um that's all i really want to talk about i know probably wasn't the greatest review but i just wanted to get out there talk to you guys about it talk about why i've been enjoying this game loving this game and uh yeah guys um i hope you guys have a great night and uh see you guys